Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do an oil painting of cherries and a pitcher, and I did a little sketch with water-soluble graphite and watercolors to kind of get me a kind of color idea, and then I decided to sketch it in right on a primed linen panel with oil pastels. And I know this uh, this yellow ochre is hard to see, so I'm grabbing a little bit of a light blue, because I know they'll you know they'll make a pretty much a gray and i'm just sketching in some little ovals for the cherries i just basically want to map everything out so i'll have a a um, place to go from now i want to make a gray so i'm mixing ultramarine blue and i believe it's burnt umber the oils i'm using are the master's touch oils by the same company that makes um the sonnet watercolors and the saint petersburg white knights watercolors so i was trying out their oil paints for the first time and i find they mix really beautifully i did have to add um a uh, lizard and crimson from another brand just because i didn't have a cool red in the set that i had but i will link up that set and um the website down below so if you want to check them out you can i found them to be very high quality but i to be honest i don't paint them much with oil so um i find most oils to be a very similar quality those are very buttery ready to go i didn't really have to add much to them to get them going so i added a little bit of yellow ochre to that mix obviously to warm it up and then i'm just adding in some white and i'm kind of spreading that around with my brush i wanted some texture there to begin with so i'm just kind of using um little kind of xy back and forth strokes as you can see there. I have dipped my brush in some paint thinner from time to time just to get the paint to flow, especially to liquefy those um, oil pastels and to um, make my shadow kind of thin because I didn't want to get too much color down when I put my shadow. You can see there how, how washy that made that. That was probably a little bit too much um, thinner, but it really helps the paint spread around. And um, I didn't think it really diluted it that much because the paints have such nice tinting strength to them. So I'm going to continue going around and uh, for the tabletop I added a little bit more blue to that yellow ochre and a blue brown white mix that I had and basically haven't cleaned my brush at all. I'm using the same brush, the same colors, just varying the amounts of each and um, I wanted to get that in with some shadows right off the bat and the shadows again are the blue and brown mixed together and when it mixes in with the white because I, I think that white is the strongest oil paint color it just seems like um, it's easy to lighten up a color it's hard to darken it back up again so um, I went in fairly dark with my shadows because I know that white was going to be really overpowering now I'm using a larger brush to smooth out my brush strokes because I decided in the end I wanted to have a smooth background Whenever I'm painting in oil paints or even acrylics, I like to work back to front. So I did my backgrounds first, which was the wall in the background and the tabletop. And now I'm painting the next thing that's forward towards myself, in that case, the picture. So I mixed up some more of my gray and I'm putting in any shadows that I see. In this reference photo by Beck Partel on Paint My Photo will be linked in the video description so you can go check it out and that way you can print it out and uh, look at that as you're painting. Uh, oil painting can go a little bit slower than watercolors, hence the, uh, the speeded up version that I have here. And I find that I like to kind of go back and a lot of time keep blending my strokes and whatnot. So it does make for a very long tutorial if I left it in real time. Um, and if I had recorded it, narrated it as I was going, then, uh, then I would have left it real time, but I didn't. So, um, so I'm just doing a speed paint here. I use that same color on the tabletop under my cherries cause I knew they needed a little bit more shadow and I just try to, you know, make the most efficient use of my brush strokes and time while I'm painting. So now I'm just going in with white and adding highlights to my picture and adding kind of the mass tone to the picture. And as it mixes in with my shadow, it just gives me a really nice natural look. So I have this about three times faster than I typically paint. So just to kind of give you an idea of uh, how long it's taking me to blend. It's certainly not a long process, but, um, but I thought it would be kind of redundant to leave it fast. But look how quickly you can really get some shape and form with the oil paints. If you want to warm it up a little bit, you can add a touch of yellow ochre. Just try not to, just try to look at like your reference photo and see what colors you actually see within the white. It's, um, it's a really fun exercise uh, and I really enjoy painting this piece. And then, then uh, switching to a smaller brush, I can go in and add any um, little darker slices of shadow like on the handle to make it appear a little bit more three-dimensional and also kind of add that definition where the handle attaches to the edge of the uh, picture. You can see at the top where that little highlight is on the top of the handle and then you can kind of see where it attaches, I think. So it's basically a lot of molding. It's almost like you're, you're sculpting when you're doing this type of uh, painting. 
I like to keep a rag handy so I can wipe out any uh, colors where I don't want it, like I did on the cherries, because that white would have muddied up my color. Now I went in with some bright cadmium yellow and just added the highlight spots on the cherries. And now I'm going in with alizarin crimson just on its own and painting around the highlights. I want to start off with a super vivid color because it's easier to dull down a color than it is to brighten it back up after the fact. So I really try to look at my reference photo and pick out what the real bright colors are and try to find them in their most truest tones to begin. I think the reason I prefer oil painting to acrylics is that you have so much open work time. Like I could leave that painted like that, kind of looking like some weird colored olives and pimentos, and come back in two hours and then blend them together. You just don't have that versatility with acrylics, unless you want to get into a bunch of mediums, which I don't. I like the simplicity of uh, of painting like this. Now, I know that that yellow was a little bright, so what I did was I just picked up a little yellow ochre, which is a more muted yellow, and I'm using that to kind of blend those two colors together. So that way I'll end up with a much more natural cherry look, but I am keeping my colors really bright until I absolutely want to dull them. For shadow, I'm using some ultramarine blue mixed in with my alizarin crimson. So it's basically a really deep transparent purple that I'm putting on here. But since it's so uh, transparent, it comes out as such a natural dark. And um, we talk about sometimes mixing our complements to get shadow colors. In this case, that would be green. But if I put that green over the red, it would make it look kind of muddy and spoiled, like an old spoiled cherry. And that's not the look that I want. So a lot of times when you need to shadow red, you end up using a purple because it gives you a fresher, um, more rich color, especially if you're doing flowers or fruit. So keep that in mind when you're working. Now the stems, I'm going to need some different variations of green. So I'm using that nice uh, bright yellow, that cadmium yellow with some of the green that was in the kit. And when I want to dull it down, I can add a little bit of um, yellow ochre to it. Just to kind of um, try to keep your colors looking natural and keep looking at your reference photo for a guide as to what uh, colors should be there. And again, that reference photo is linked in the video description. I switched to a really uh, fine brush for this so that I could get those really nice lines. I find that if you take care of your oil brushes properly, they will last you a long time, as long as watercolor brushes almost, if you clean them properly. And the way I go about cleaning mine is that I keep a, um, you can see that mason jar on my desk, that's got mineral spirits in it and a piece of aluminum screening. And I can brush my, my brush against the aluminum screening and knock off all the paint and all the clean thinner stays up high and all the sediment falls to the bottom. And when the sediment gets too high, I let it settle, I pour off the good thinner onto another jar, I wipe out the uh, grime and then I can pour the uh, thinner right back in there and keep using it. it and it keeps you from dumping out um, solvents and it's economical too. And as you can see, just basically painting all the uh, stems. And I've got a problem with that, that cherry that's second to the edge on the left because the stem is just coming out straight and it doesn't look very good. And I'll show you how I fix that in a little bit because it like seriously is bugging me now and it bugs me until I fix it. But with oils, everything is fixable. It's uh, oils and watercolors. I think I like those the best because they you can just keep fixing them and you can, it's just, it feels just more intuitive to paint with those mediums for me anyway. I know it's not the case for everyone and you can totally do this technique and do this painting in acrylics. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy oils if you want to do this. It will work just as well with acrylics. You just might want a little bit of um, flow enhancer or, or um, dry, slow dry medium, something to keep your, your paints from drying. Now look at just what a few white highlights on the picture does. It brings out the detail on the handle and on the uh, rim and um, it just makes it feel more round and glossy. That's what those really sharp white highlights do. They give it like a sparkle and a gloss and I think it looks really nice. It's a good idea to have a, a good variety of brushes when you begin a painting. You can see I've switched to a really skinny one here for those really bright sparkly highlights on the picture. And uh, I'll probably dirty oh, about 10 or 15 brushes during a painting. And um, after I rinse them out really well with the thinner and get all of the extra um, paint off of them, I wipe them with a rag and then I wash them with brush cleaning soap uh, and water. But then they have to dry completely before you use them again. So you don't want to wash them with soap and water until you're sure you're done painting for the day because it will take overnight to dry. Just a little, um, a little tip for you. And if you paint oils every day, I wouldn't even bother doing the soap and water wash until like the end of the week because you really don't need to if you're going to be cleaning them in the thinner. The, the paint's not going to get in the ferrule and dry that quickly. It's not like acrylics in that respect. 
Now that I have all these highlights in, I'm noticing that my shadows could use a little work. So I'm using that same fine brush. And you'll notice as I go through the painting, my brushes get smaller and smaller as I'm getting my details. Same as with watercolor. I'm using some of the gray that I mixed with the blue and brown. And I am going in and kind of carving out the details. Any place you need a little sliver of shadow, go ahead and add that in at this point. Um, it can be very tempting to keep overworking and playing in an area of your painting, but um, but try to just put down the uh, the highlights and shadows that you need. And then I'm going back in with some pure white and just kind of redefining my highlights there. The last uh, touches that you're going to do with the white will just be the sharpest, brightest sparkles on the picture, and uh, then the picture's going to be all done. While I have that small brush out, I'm going to adjust the shadows under my cherries. I can see that they are definitely not dark enough for how uh, big the cherries are, so I want to go ahead and put those in there. While I'm at it, I'm giving a little bit more shadow under the picture as well to make it all balanced. So now I'm looking at the cherries and I can see some of the edges need a little bit of rounding and smoothing. So I'm using my crimson to um, and that small brush to kind of round things out and make sure everything looks nice and kind of smooth and shiny and glossy. Sometimes when you're going in and you're putting shadows around an object, you get you kind of smudge the edge and I really need hard edges on the cherries to make it look realistic. Now with a little bit of um, ultramarine blue with my crimson, I can add shadows kind of in the dips where the stems attach and also on any shadows that are behind, on cherries that are behind other ones in the composition. Now I'm adding a red shiny spot on the pitcher because it would be reflecting the color of the cherries. Now it's time to brighten up some of those stems with a little brighter mix of the green. So this is just the, uh, the green that was in the kit plus the uh, cadmium yellow and I'm using that just to make everything a little bit more lively. It's really easy to fix a mistake on an oil painting. What I like to do is take a fancy tool called a cotton swab and I just use it dry and I wipe out the, the offending paint, the, uh, the stem in this case. And then I'm just grabbing a little bit of the background color uh, from my palette on a clean brush and just kind of adding it to the area and also just spreading around the color that's already there so I get a nice seamless blend. Then I want to go in with my cherry colors on another brush and just kind of refill in the cherries so I don't end up with this white area with no paint on it. So you basically want to paint it as if the stem was never there. Now I decided to go against what the reference photo had and put in a stem that kind of mimicked the cherry on the right hand side because I thought that that would be an, an interesting composition and it would look a lot more natural and guide your eye through the painting a little bit better. So feel free to make those choices when you're painting. I often find when I'm oil painting, I do a lot of repetitive stuff that isn't really helpful and I had managed to blend out all of my good highlights that I had before. So now I'm going back in with some of the yellow and adding my highlight areas in. If I were to use white at this point, I would get pink instead of a nice cherry, red cherry color. So I find yellow is a very useful color for adding highlights. And with your highlights done, you can reinforce the shadows as well. And again, that's ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And uh, you can just kind of deepen where you feel like some of those colors need a little darkening. After you have your mid highlights and shadows um, all in there, then you can add your bright reflections. And you have to be careful not to fuss with these too much because you don't want them mixing in with your paint and causing um, pinkness or mud. So very gentle, light touch with this step. Take your time with this part of the painting. I find that this is the most rewarding part of the painting because you're just adding all your high sparkles and brightness. You want to be careful if you go from adding highlights to the cherries to on then onto the pitcher. You might need a, a fresh brush or you might need to clean it well so you don't end up transferring red over onto the white where you don't want it. But, um, you know, use a small brush, take your time, get the little highlights on the stems and where the stems kind of are inserted into the cherry flesh and, um, kind of get your edges defined, and that's pretty much it. If you want some information about the paints that I used, I will put a link in the video description to Pro Art Supplies. Um, they sent me these oils to try. Uh, full disclosure, they sent me them for free. Um, I didn't find them to be high quality. I don't paint with oils that much, so um, I can't give like a review on them other than to say they're decent paints. 
Um, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I thought it was a lot of fun. As soon as you're done, make sure you sign your name and then set it somewhere where it can dry completely because it will take you probably a week or two to dry to the touch. So that's just kind of the nature of the beast with oils. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please share this video with any of your artsy friends that might enjoy it. And before you leave, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.